Hello and welcome everyone to the fourth session of the long-term sustainability series. Today we're going to be working on the solution potential assessment. This is a tool to analyze the potential of your offering, understanding the user segment it will target and its competitive advantage. Why is it useful? Well, it is interesting to be better prepared and understand if we are missing any critical aspect of the whole picture and as soon as possible. And when? Well, as soon as possible, but once we have the value proposition and the initial open source Canva drafted. And now let's have a look at the, at the Canva itself and the questionnaire. It is composed of six sections, as you will see here that you can go through. Uh, each section has a set of questions. And um, let's go, for example, to the first one, the problem solution fit. Each question has the question on top, then the ranking, um, the scoring color and the scoring ranking, and then the, the scoring criteria right below it, where it will tell you, for example, for this first Question, does your idea solve an existing problem? Um, zero will be not so sure about it. And five will be yes, the problem it addresses is very clear. And the same will happen for every question. They all have a different, uh, a different criteria and they are all explained. So the whole of this, the, the whole point of this exercise is, although you're gonna be putting here at the bottom in this in this position or in this sticky note or whatever way you want to use it, a numerical value. This is to provide you with a qualitative understanding and qualitative, qualitative scoring of the readiness and the potential of your solution. So for each of these six sections, we're going to um, answer a set of questions, as I said, then we're going to add up the numbers to a final score for each section that we will collect here. Same for section four, section five, section six. And then at the end of it, we're going to translate the final scoring for each of the sections into this spider web. So this could help us visualize at once how, how well are we prepared in some aspects, but if we have any weak spot in some other aspect. So I think it doesn't make any sense to go question by question all along. And it makes sense, again, to go through an example. In this case, uh, again, the example of Arduino. So let's start. Um, and before we start, let's consider that this, is whole, uh, this whole exercise is hypothetical, obviously. So let's imagine we are positioning ourselves in the shoes of the uh, Arduino developers once they were drafting their initial idea. So pro probably a very exciting moment, but also with some uncertainty. So hopefully this self-assessment would give them uh, a bigger uh, understanding or a better understanding of how prepared they are. So in case of the, the first section, problem solution fit, does your idea solve an existing problem? The, um, we've given it a five because it was clear they were addressing a problem for for a certain uh, customer segment, which were looking for uh, affordable tools, um, easy to use, uh, user-friendly, beginner-friendly, uh, etc. Is it a critical slash vital problem for the users or more like a trivial one? Zero, it will be a very niche problematic and five will be a wide and general problem. In this case, it's a four. It is relatively wide. It covers a, a wide range of different uh, customer segments and different applications. So that's why we've given it, given it a, four, um, a four. How easy will it be for your customers to implement your solutions? Zero will be very difficult um, or a complex process. And five, an easy and smooth implementation. In this case, um, we begin with need a four because it is rather easy in fact, this is answering a pain point, which is the ease of use and the, and the long learning curves of this kind of platforms. So although it requires some, some knowledge, it should be relatively easy. So now let's jump into the second uh, section, the targeted market. And the, first question, the first question is, is there a well-defined end user for this technology? Zero will be not really clear, and five will be yes, very well-defined. In this case, 
is very well defined. They knew who, who were they targeting, as we have seen by the by the exercises that we have done so far. Have you already been in contact with potential interested users? Zero would be a not not yet, and five, yes, I have. Um, we assume they were because they were in contact in contact with um, with educational institutions and uh, and the potential users they were going to address this to. So we've given it a four. Is it a very niche customer segment or is it broad? Zero would be rather niche and five very broad. Um, here again, it's quite versatile for different sectors. So we've given it a four. What market market share do you expect to take in this area in the first five years? A zero would be less than 0.5% and five would be above 5%. Here we've given it a three because probably at the initial stages, assuming that in the, uh, in the first five years of the uh, launching, they were gonna be able to uh, amount up to more than 5% of a market share would be too much. So that's why we've given it um, a three. So in this case, total score is 16 out of 20. Then if we go to the section number three, external factors, Will this solution have a social impact? Zero, not that I'm aware of, and five, yes, it will clearly have. It will in this case, and we've given it uh, five because it's aiming at broadening the use of uh, electronics and microelectronics and development platforms, um, also for educational purposes. So it's in the core, um, core values. Do you think you could engage the community of users to work and spread your solution? Zero, no, it will be quite difficult. Five will be yes, I believe so. In this case, it's a five. They were quite in contact with the, with the community. And in fact, of course, we're looking at it after it already succeeded. And that's why we are talking about it. But it was clear that they knew um, how to engage the community. Are you entering a highly regulated market? Meaning um, there are standards, it's really complicated to, 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 to penetrate. And zero would be, yes, it's a very much a highly regulated market and five, not at all. In this case, it's, uh, it's a five because um, although there are regulations for the development of electronics, like in, in general, all CE, and all different uh, compliance and certificates. The, there was no regulations in case of uh, development boards and microelectronics. So that's a five. Will you encounter strong barriers to entry? And by barriers to entry, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with this, uh, a regulation, highly regulated market could impact in a strong barrier of entry, but uh, let's have a look at the, or let's imagine a, a social media, you have a social media where, where people are already there, there's a big amount of them, and for them to change to another um, social media platform, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. They don't really want to, and, and hence, if you are someone coming up with another social media platform, you will encounter those high barriers of entry. Your, potential users will be hardly coming to your solution. But there can be other barriers of entry, like there's a monopoly of someone um, um, covering all the aspects in the supply chain, um, many different things that could impact you. So that's why this is in the section of the external factors. So in this case, zero will be yes, I foresee many barriers, and five, no, it is easy to enter. And here we've given it a two, and the reason why We've given it a two is because there were already some uh, existing platforms and also because of the factor that I have just mentioned, the example I've just given, the supply chain, right? So um, you're going to enter a place where where it's going to be difficult to manufacture, manufacture things in mass scale or in sufficiently mass scale with a sufficiently good quality to be able to succeed. So... That's why we've given it a two. Are you taking into account the privacy of your users? 
um, zero would be not really in five yes we are concerned about it and taking it into consideration well here we've given it a three because although it doesn't lie at the core of the, of the purpose of the the Arduino um, it is in some way uh, I concern and they are aware of it so at least in the platform and the development platform they they are taking care of it but in the other in the other parts it's not so much important so that's why we've given it a three so here they scored 20 out of 25 then in the section number four market readiness when will this solution be ready for the market zero in a few years time five will be soon in months time so here it was clear that they were able to launch the Arduino in months time so that's why we've given it a five do you consider you need a lot of funding to be ready to launch zero will be yes quite a lot and five no I'm mostly okay with my current funds well, in this case, Arduino certainly had a need for extra funding and, and, and they applied for funding. They had funding sources, so that's why we've given it a three. And you should consider this in your project as well. Do you consider various revenue streams to make your solution sustainable in the long term? Probably you have already addressed this issue in the open source Canva. Uh, so in this case, a zero will be not clear how I will sustain it, and a five will be yes, I have several ways of generating revenues. In this case, it was clear for Arduino that they were uh, quite sure, quite certain of the potential revenue streams they could they could amount. So they get a final score of 13 out of 15. Uniqueness section. The solution can be used in many different applications. Zero would be just for a single application. Five, it can be used in many. In this case is a five because this lies at the core of the motivating factors that motivated Arduino developers to, to come up with this solution. So it's a five. Do you have a strong reputation brand in the community? Zero will be nope, I'm just starting, and five will be yes, I'm very well known. Um, although they were known, they at the moment I think they probably couldn't say or couldn't think they had a, such a strong reputation in the community, so that's why we've given it a, a two. How reliable and trustworthy is your solution? Zero, it's hard to say, five is extremely reliable. In this case, we've given it a three. Uh, because although this this was one of their goals, it was probably uncertain at the initial stages how reliable the solution was. Is your solution different from others in the market? Zero will be no, it is very similar to others, and five will be yes, absolutely unique. In this case, it's a five. It was quite unique at that time. Do you consider you hold an unfair advantage compared to other solutions available? and unfair advantage can be whatever so um, the designs you do the way the way you are creating your algorithms if you have a, a connection with a certain supply chain and um, zero will be not really uh, five would be yes and i can verbalize it so i know what it is in this case it was a four for them because they were quite quite aware of their unique selling point and how it would disrupt the market and in the end it did so here they score 19 out of 25 and the last one which is also non obvious the team now let's think of the team itself the team is technically skilled to succeed um zero not at all five yes absolutely for sure the team developing arduino in the first place was technically skilled so that's why we've given it a five the team has the necessary business and marketing knowledge. Not at all, or five, yes, absolutely. I guess they were technical and technically skilled, as we were saying, but probably not the most business-oriented or marketing-oriented, so that's why we've given it a three. Same for the following one. The team possesses the financial knowledge needed. Uh, zero would be not at all. Five, yes, absolutely. In this case, for sure, they didn't have 
but they managed to get the support, so they succeeded in the long run, so that's why we've given it a three. The core team is committed. This is also important. Um, if your team is committed to the to the goal that you have set, then probably you have a, a more pleasant uh, journey ahead. CEO, not really committed. Five, yes, fully committed. And in this case, yes, they were fully committed. So in this case, they score 16 out of 20. So now if we translate all of these scores, remember uh, 13, 16, um, 20 for the external factors, 13 for the market readiness, etc. We put this here in the spider web. And we have this visual summary. It will help us understand that, you know, probably the weakest points of all the initial offer and the development and the roadmap for Arduino were the market readiness and the targeted market, followed by the team. But then they had a clear uh, problem solution fit. They were somehow okay with the external factors and they were quite well with their uniqueness. So that's about it. I hope it was useful to all of you and I hope you can run through it with the guiding questions that we have set. Thank you very much and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.